Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and whether you're doing the ketogenic diet or not, if you own an oven, this video is for you. Now imagine if you were out shopping for an oven, and the salesperson warned you that the particular model you were looking at has some issues. First off, doesn't heat real evenly. There's some hot and cold spots in the oven, so periodically you're going to have to open that oven door and just rotate the food around. Also, every time you do open that door, whether it's to check temperature or to rotate food, you're going to lose a lot of heat. About 50% of your heat, according to Andrew Zimmern of the Food Network. Oh, and one more thing, the actual temperature inside your oven is up to 25 degrees off in one direction or the other from what the thermostat's telling you. So if a salesperson said all those things to you, you know, you might be a little bit hesitant on buying that particular oven. I have some sour news for you though. That probably is your oven. So whether your oven suffers from just one of those issues or all three, I'm gonna show you how to solve them right now. First off, just the design of an oven. There's a lot of uneven shapes in here. Our heating elements are not perfectly even and that is gonna result in uneven heating and hot and cold spots throughout your oven. We can fix both the uneven heating and the heat loss when we open the door through the use of a baking steel. If you've watched any of my videos where I bake, you've probably seen this down in the bottom of the oven. This is a 3 8 inch baking steel, and I would guess it weighs at least 25 pounds. I got the baking steel back in my pre-keto days just so that I could make Neapolitan pizza. It is pretty amazing how quickly you can cook a pizza in a 500 degree oven with a baking steel. We're talking like three or four minutes. But then I discovered that if I put this on the bottom shelf of my oven and left it there all the time, it created a far more even cooking environment, temperature-wise. It also retains a ton of heat. I mean, if you think about the inside of your oven, what retains the heat? You've got the walls and you've got the racks. That's it. You open the oven door, so much hot air escapes. But with a baking steel, you've got that extra thing in there that retains and continues to radiate heat even after you open and close the door. So with the baking steel, we're gonna solve our first two problems, uneven heating and temperature loss. And we'll put this onto the lower shelf. Now the next issue with the thermostat being off also affects a lot of ovens. If you've ever gone to bake something and found that your results didn't turn out the same way it did in the cookbook or in the recipe, either it burnt, it cooked too fast, or maybe it didn't cook enough, or something didn't rise, those are some telltale signs that your oven is out of calibration. And I kind of discovered that mine was out of calibration after I had a couple of viewers contact me and tell me that my candied pecans recipe, which I'll link to right up here, didn't turn out for them, that they just didn't get crispy. Well, I assumed that it was because their oven was off and maybe cooking too cold. I checked mine and found out that my oven was actually running 25 degrees warmer than what the thermostat read. To check your oven's calibration, I recommend two tools. One, just one of these cheapy $7 oven thermometers, which is also good for finding hot and cold spots on your grill, and an IR thermometer, which I think this is an essential kitchen tool anyway. It's just great for reading temperature from a distance, places where you don't necessarily want to put your hand or put a thermometer. Super awesome tool, not that expensive. And I'll link to both of these in the description below. There's also another little issue with your thermostat. It kind of isn't entirely honest with you about when your oven is preheated. You will find that when your oven beeps and says that it's preheated and it's up to temperature, probably not yet. I typically allow my oven to preheat an additional 10 to 15 minutes longer than the time that it tells me that it's actually preheated. So we're gonna start preheating. We'll see what the temperature actually is when it tells us it's preheated, and then we'll see what the temperature is after it's fully preheated and should be stable. And I'm gonna set the oven to 350 degrees. We'll see how long until the oven tells us it's preheated, and then we'll use our IR thermometer to find out when it is actually hit 350. I'm gonna put this cheap oven thermometer right in the center so that we can compare the temperature in the oven versus what our thermostat tells us. All right, that took eight minutes 
according to our thermostat. Now, I'm not sure if I can zoom in on this enough, but our thermometer inside is reading 250 degrees. The temperature on our baking steel is 223. Temperature on the back wall, 254. So do not trust your thermostat. We're gonna let this go for another, I'm gonna say at least 10, if not 15 minutes, and then check the temperature again. It has been 15 minutes, and I'm not sure if you can see the thermometer, but we're just almost at 350. Using the IR thermometer, we can see the back wall is at 330, baking steel, 325, 326, sidewall, 336, sidewall, 329. So even after letting our oven preheat an additional 15 minutes beyond the time that it said it was at 350, it still was a little bit shy of 350. So from now on, plan on preheating your oven a little extra. If you're at 350, at least 15 minutes longer, and then probably add five minutes for each 50 degrees. So if you're heating to 400, I would preheat for at least 20 minutes. But for right now, we're gonna let my oven keep going for probably another 15 minutes because I put it back out of calibration to where it was originally, and I think what we're gonna see is a temperature right around 375. Since we've been having issues getting the focus to work on our internal thermometer, we'll just use the IR gun. And what do we got there? 368, 370, ah, looks like right in that 370 range. So about 20 degrees off. If you have an oven that's been made within the last probably 20 years, there's a good chance that you are able to manually recalibrate it. I have a GE and I'll show you how to do it on mine. If you have another brand, all you gotta do is just Google, uh, say Samsung oven, whatever model calibration, and I'm sure you'll find the instructions. So for my oven, I press the bake and broil buttons simultaneously for about two seconds. and then it says SF for special features. I press the bake button once if I want to raise the temperature, or twice, see the minus sign, if I want to lower the temperature, and I want to lower it by 20 degrees. Then I press start, and it's calibrated. Most manufacturers will allow you to calibrate the oven by 35 degrees in either direction. Now this also allows for a little bit of a hack in that if you want to turn your oven into a dehydrator, you can actually adjust the thermostat so that the actual temperature is considerably lower than what it says on the screen. Most ovens have a minimum temperature of 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but if you're dehydrating something and you want to take that number down, you could potentially take that number down to somewhere between 145 and 165. Just remember to set it back to the proper number once you're done dehydrating. And with those tips, tricks, and hacks, now your oven is running in tip-top shape. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button. If you're not a subscriber, why not subscribe? Hit that button too. And while you're at it, tap that bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. Just make sure you select all. Thanks for watching.